Okay, hi everyone. Welcome again to Author Story. I'm Alexander Lim, your host, and for this episode, I'm interviewing Andrew Michael Hurley, author of the book The Loney. And for those of you following along who are interested, please feel free to go over now to the Amazon link in the description below the video and check out or get a copy of Andrew's book. So Andrew, welcome to Author Story. It's great having you as our guest. Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks for asking me. Cool, cool. So Andrew, uh, would you mind introducing yourself and tell our listeners a little bit about your story and your book? Uh, what's your background? Um, my name is Andrew Michael Hurley. Um, I am the author of The Loney. Um, I have a background in teaching. Um, that's my sort of uh, main occupation. Mm. Um, so I've worked as a, as a teacher and I've worked as a librarian as well. Mm. Um, and I started to write The Loney probably about four or five years ago. Okay. Um, and now, now I, I write full time. Mm, okay. All right. Cool. So, what what sort of stuff do you teach? Um, was it related to you? You mentioned being a librarian, uh, working in the library. So, is it something to do with like uh, literature and stuff like that? Um, yes, I used to teach um, English literature and English mm. language, and I've also taught uh, creative writing as well. Mm. Um, and I decided to work as a librarian, which would give a little bit more time to write. Um, so, uh, so good, good reason to keep libraries open. I think because it's allowed me to to write novel. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, and how long have you been writing? I mean, I understand the Loney is not your first book or not your first story or fictional work. Um, no, I've been writing probably well. I've been writing for as long as I can remember. Really, um, mm. writing is all something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to do this for a living. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, the Loney is my first novel, but I've written uh, short stories before now. So I've published two collections of short stories um, about uh, sort of 10 years ago. Um, but I really wanted to, to challenge myself, really wanted to have a go at writing a novel. And uh, so, so the Loney was kind of an experiment as much as anything else, really, just mm. to see if I could do it. Okay, cool. So how, how different is it writing a full-length book compared to writing, say, a short story? Um, I think that, I think they're probably two very different disciplines. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, though, I think there are some things which do kind of transfer from one to another. Um, certainly, that idea of economy uh, was something that I tried to bring over to writing a novel as well. Right. Um, I'm a huge admirer of people like Raymond Carver and uh, John Cheever, mm -hmm. Hemingway, Chekhov, all these writers mm -hmm. who are just so so good at writing. The bare bones of a story and just being able to uh, you know sort of pare things down to, to the bare minimum and make language really really work hard for them right. and i've always been a huge admirer of those writers so that was something i really wanted to to try and bring across to my novel writing as well mm. okay all right cool cool so i guess that's what uh, that's why it kind of took you uh what four years to write out the, the novel then i mean the discipline yeah that's, yeah that's it really so there's a lot of kind of trying to cut it down to you know, to the bare minimum as well, really. But I think um, if the if the novel is a is a horror story and it's a gothic horror, then I think that's the way in which good horror works as well. That you don't kind of see everything, and not everything sort of glimpse things out of the corner of your eye. And so I think that pairing down that that economic style of writing really suits gothic horror as well. Right, right, cool, cool, okay, fantastic. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the book. Uh, for the benefit of our listeners who are not familiar with Aloni, what is the book all about? What, how would you summarize it? The book is about a group of Catholic pilgrims that go uh, on a retreat to the Loney. So the Loney is a, is a, is a, is a landscape in the novel. Um, and so they're going to stay in an old house on the, uh, the coast um, with a view to um, healing the narrator's brother. So um, Hani, the narrator's brother, has been born with a, a mental disability. Mm. Uh, he can't speak. And so the idea is that they're going to take him um, to this uh, to the shrine at Easter time and he'll drink the holy water and hopefully he'll be healed of his afflictions. Right. Uh, and they've been going to this place for, for a number of years and nothing has happened. And so they go, they, they try again. And um, so they, they go with kind of hope in their, in their hearts, really. Um, but as they're, as they're going through the various Easter rituals, uh, the narrator and his brother start to notice that there are other forms of healing taking place in this area as well. Right. So there are local people who are cured of uh, the blindness or, the, or cancer or whatever. Mm. Um, and so it becomes a sort of a novel really about the clash between uh, Christianity, but also much older beliefs as well. So things like paganism and uh, that kind of thing. So it's about the way in which those two things sort of intertwine and how, I suppose, uh, and how they are very similar in lots of ways as well. 
Mm, okay, okay, cool. So, Andrew, what inspired you to write this book? Was there like any, any like an aha moment that you thought, hey, you know, maybe I should write something like this. It should be this way and so on and so forth. Yeah, there was really, um, it, I mean, it was really the landscape that um, that came to me first. Um, mm. So, um, the, the the set uh, on the northwest coast of England, a uh, place called Morecambe Bay, uh, which is a very um, kind of lonely place. Uh, there are a few sort of villages dotted around this this bay, um, but it's a very mercurial, very uh, sort of ever changing place. You go there from one hour to the next, and it's never quite the same, and mm. the, the tides come in very quickly and the sandbanks shift and the water channels move around so it's a very a very odd lonely place and it was a place that I knew reasonably well but about five or six years ago when I was thinking about writing a novel I was spending quite a bit of time up in that area and I just I thought it, it was just so atmospheric and just such an amazing place that I I thought this I've got I have to set a novel here this is this is just perfect for you know a quite dark story um, and so, yeah, it, it was really the landscape that informed the novel to begin with. But I also wanted to try and write something about faith as well. And mm. uh, so I was, I was brought up as a, as a Roman Catholic, mm. uh, as lots of people are in the northwest of England. It's quite a strongly Catholic place. Mm. And um, I mean, I lost my faith really when I was probably about 12 or 13. Okay, okay. But a lot of the, uh, the feelings of, of uh, sort of a lot of the, the kind of imagery of the church, a lot of the sort of... Um, yeah, the feelings of being in a church, I think, had stayed with me for a long time. It's something I hadn't quite worked out of my system yet, so I was kind of interested in trying to explore that area as well. Mm, okay, all right, cool. And, and, and like, uh, I was thinking, yeah, you, it's uh, interesting you mentioned the environment, because, uh, I mean, like, the environment, the setting, the places, they don't occur as being just passive settings. There's, I don't know, the best word I can use is active or vivid, like a living character, and that, you yeah. Know, having an environment like that and yet still having the setting in that environment it occurs to me you know I'm not really a writer but it occurs to me it's kind of hard to do so did you intend the setting to be what it was what it turned out to be from the start or did it just you know kind of grow organically um, I, I think a, a sort of mixture of the two really um, I mean it's, it is a very atmospheric place um, certainly and I really wanted to try my best to to capture that on on the page really so not only the way that it looked but also the way that it made me feel as well um, and so but yeah there's lots of descriptions that sort of grow out from that really and I think um, the the connection that the place had with the with the people who went there with the characters I think that began to grow quite or grow quite organically actually um, mm. yeah but it was um, it was a very strong presence I think, when I was when I was visiting the place and I hope hopefully that that, that comes across in in the novel mm, cool cool <laughs> yeah now about about the book I mean what what I find interesting about this for me anyway it doesn't fall you know neatly into any particular category it could be like I mean, it's written like the reminiscence of uh, childhood, but there's also something else that goes on. And, you know, it, it, it's essentially kind of like a horror yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. And what I like about it is the horror yeah. is subtle, it's nuanced, it's not like the in-your-face kind of thing, you know, that we see in movies yeah. and a lot of books every day. <laughs> so, did yeah. you really create it from the start to be like that? I mean, was that really your intention? Not really, no. Um... You now, lots of people have, have sort of uh, categorised it as a as a gothic horror, and I and I wouldn't argue too strongly that it's not. I think it, that's probably what it is. Um, but um, no, it's interesting. It's been interesting for me to understand how I came to that really, because I didn't really set out to write a, a gothic horror, and that's probably why it doesn't really fit into that category. Yeah. Um, I was more interested really in trying to just write a you know an interesting story about about faith and about these characters and um, I suppose the, the kind of darkness in it came out as I was writing it really mm. um, and so yeah it's been very interesting for me the more the more interviews that I've done about it to try and understand I came to it in this very roundabout sort of way really and, and I think it I think it goes back to the landscape again it's, mm. it's so odd and so quirky and so unusual that I think I think any story that was set in that place would inevitably fall into that gothic horror genre in, in some way yeah. um, because it is, it is so sort of ghost-like. I think there is an element of otherness there, and, and the supernatural that's very hard to to ignore. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's probably the reason why it, it sort of falls into that category. If it, if it falls into any category at all. Yeah, true, true. Because for me, well, for me, it's kind of hard to categorize. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good thing, though, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's good. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, so so I gather from what you said that it you're, it seems that this book didn't start out to be, you know, uh, the book that ev- it eventually became then. No, not really at all, no. And I, but I think for me that's, that's the limit of writing. I think that's the... Uh, the thrill of writing. Um, I, I, I love that idea that you can sit down in the morning with an idea and and just see where it takes you and where you start off and where you end up. Maybe completely unexpected and totally um, different from from what you were, what you imagine it to be. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not one of those writers who can kind of sit down and, and plan each chapter and then just write a book. Uh-huh. Um, I think that would kill it stone dead for me. Really, I think I like that organic. Uh, unfolding of, of ideas and unfolding of landscapes and character mm. that um, it's, it's a very you know it's quite a, maybe a long-winded quite labor-intensive way of writing but <laughs> it's this the way that I do it and then you know the way that it sort of, sort of seems to work for me eventually cool all right so th- regarding I mean like the subtlety of, of the uh, of the horror in here do, do you have any do you have any literary influences that you know help you kind of pull off that kind of subtlety Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, I've always been drawn to that that kind of writing. I love those kinds of stories. Um, I mean, a huge, yeah, kind of huge range of influences, really, from people like Bram Stoker mm-hmm. up to people like Shirley Jackson, for example. Uh, people like M.R. James, a really fantastic uh, Edwardian English ghost story writer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think all of them have that that subtlety to the horror, and I think a lot of it's embedded in landscape as well, which I find really really fascinating. Um, so yeah, I think I would definitely definitely cite those kinds of people's influences. People like Stephen King as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was very uh, gracious enough to in, to endorse them, the Loney with some um, some uh, pretty amazing praise. Mm-hmm. Um, I've read lots of his books. I grew up reading his kinds of stories. So right, right. I think I've always been drawn to that kind of dark gothic uh, novel, really. So yeah, that's, and maybe that's another reason why inevitably the Loney maybe sort of ended up in that way. Really, I think those kind of Images and those feelings were probably swirling around in my imagination somewhere, and they, and they, and they naturally came out in the writing. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. So, Andrew, uh, the characters that comprise the family are, well, how do I say this? They're 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 kind of familiar, you know, kind of like ordinary folk. I mean, but there's definitely something off kilter with them. You know, it's kind of like that off balancing thing. Like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, Mummers, an overbearing matriarch who's out to heal her son, come what may, and fathers, you know, retiring, shy kind, and Hanny's the brother with the concern. Did you base these characters on actual people, or did you just like exaggerate certain traits and just put them together in one character? Um, yeah, they're, they're not particularly based on on actual people. Um, I think they they kind of grew out of. The writing itself, really. I think that um, you know, I would, I would sort of put characters together and get them to talk to one another and put them in different situations. And I think their personalities and their characters really sort of came out from from that. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, the, the Father Wilfred and Father Bernard were, were fascinating characters to to write. Yeah. Uh, as was Mummer. Well, Mummer was a really interesting. Oh character yeah, yeah. Mummer's, uh, Mummer seems to uh, be the most interesting among all of them. <laughs> I yeah, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, because. Um, I mean, I never, I never wanted to to set out to write a, a novel that was kind of anti-Christian or anti-Catholic, right. and I really wanted the, um, the 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 pilgrims in the in the novel to to be rounded, really, and to have to sort of understand where they were, where they were coming from, mm. and, um, and 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 a degree of sympathy for them as well. I think even yeah. Mama, who's quite scathing and quite horrible to to Hanny on a number of occasions, I, th- I still think you can kind of understand why she is that way. Really, right. that, that really the the root of her character is fear you know yeah. she's so frightened of, of not sort of accomplishing what she's meant to accomplish or so frightened of her of her Franny not of Franny not being healed that uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I think that that motivates uh, everything that she does really right right and I, I have to say you know the, the characters do not come across as you know like two-dimensional stereotypes there's like I said you know they're like real people you know they're like, yeah <clears throat> Yeah, so very interesting there. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's I think that's really important to me as well that they are sort of characters that you can walk around. They are three dimensional and they have yes. sort of all those complexities that, that real people have really. Mm, right. Okay. So the Loney, it won the uh, Costa Books Award for first novel. Am I correct? 
That's correct. Yes, I did. Yeah, back in uh, January. Yeah. Right. So, for the benefit of our listeners, what's the Cost of Books Award, and what exactly is its significance where books like yours are concerned? Um, it's uh, it's an annual award, and it's um, there are five different categories. Um, so, there's first novel, which is the lonely one, uh, nonfiction. Um, children's and another one that I can't remember at the moment. Okay. But I think there are five different five different sections to it. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a big deal in in Britain. Um, okay. You know, yeah, some some really quite significant um, authors have, have won it in the in the past. Um, quite a you know uh, quite a number of um, well known authors have, have won the the debut fiction category as well. So it was it was a huge 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 deal. It was a huge um, boost to, to the Lonely's profile and to, and to me as a writer obviously as well. Right. So and it, I mean it was to- totally unexpected, absolutely unexpected. Never never thought that would happen at, at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I've, I've said this a number of times, but. Um, no one's been more surprised than I have about how mm. how successful the loan has been. It's just been right. astonishing the last. And so, so things like winning the the Costa Prize are just they're kind of uh, yeah, just very very strange. I mean, great, but very very surreal. <laughs> okay, well, uh, congratulations on that. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there must be like hundreds or even thousands of books that get printed, but only one or one a sure. year or something gets a Costa Award. So that's pretty good. Sure. Yeah. That was, yes. Exactly. I know. It's uh, very. Uh, very honest. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, what are for so for you? What is the hardest part of writing the book? The hardest part of writing the lonely. Yes. Um, I th- yeah, I think I think there are a number of things really. I think mm. having the time. Okay. Um, okay. I was working uh, teaching and working as a librarian at the time, so just trying to fit it in around working and around family and all those right. other things that we, we have to do right, every right, day. Right. Um. And I, I, I guess just trying to, just trying to get it to work as a as a whole mm. thing, really, as a whole body of uh, of work. I mean, uh, like I said before, I don't I'd only really written short stories before, right, where you right. maybe deal with maybe two, three, four thousand words, and you can kind of hold the thing in your head quite easily. Right. With a novel of ninety thousand words, it's I think one of the things I found really hard is just trying to hold the whole thing <laughs> together and just right. understand how it all sort of. You know, it's like it's quite spinning plates, I suppose, isn't it? You know, you're just sort of having to keep spinning them and make sure they're all kind of uh, not toppling onto the floor. So, right. um, yeah, and that, that, that's hard. I think that's one of the hardest things about writing a novel. It's just such a vast, potentially unwieldy thing. It's just trying to control it. It's like a, like a wild animal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So, so about the inverse question, what is the easiest part of writing the book for you? <laughs> um <laughs> Um, that's a very good. No one's asked me that before. Actually, that's a really good question. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I found any bit of it particularly easy. Oh, okay. Um, I think that um, there certainly there are parts of it which are enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that certainly um, exploring the characters, I think, was a bit really, and just trying to make them into seemingly real people, particularly the, the two priests and, and Mummer. Um, it was just a real joy to. Uh, to kind of get to know them, really, it's, it's odd, isn't it? We sort of talk about these these characters as if they are real people, but it right. does feel like that. Particularly for me as a writer, you know, they do they do sort of seem like people that I've that I know. And you kind of sometimes catch yourself thinking, actually, no, no, they're, they're fictional. You made them up, you know. Right, right. <laughs> but they do sort of seem like real. So I think getting to know them was 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 the most enjoyable bit of it, really, definitely. But in terms, in terms of being easy, I'm um, uh, not sure about that. All right. <laughs> it's still something I've. I find hard. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Cool. I got that. Now, you know, Andrew, you know, I have to ask, you know, given the rather open-ended nature of the ending, will you be revealing what the heck actually happened at some time in the future? <laughs> um, no, I'm going to I'm gonna leave that up to people to, right. uh, okay. to, to determine themselves. Yeah. I mean, I, I know. I, I have an idea of what, what happens at the end, but, um, you know, people have spoken to me of kind of... Um, said to, said the same things, but I, okay. I, I quite like the fact that it's it is open ended and you know it's, it's open to people's interpretation about what happened and <laughs> I think for me though those are the, those are the best kind of uh, stories really I, I think mm. that that's those are the best kind of horror stories the ones that are the most genuinely unsettling the ones that stay with you the ones that haunt you are those ones that you don't quite understand or you don't entirely sure what's what's happened and they do leave you with with uh, lots of questions really so. Uh, so an answer to your question, no. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, cool. Okay, I got that. Okay, cool. 
So, Andrew, um, authors who write nonfiction books and also, you know, people who write fiction books, you know, they sometimes go on a journey as they do so. Like, they thought one way about something and after they wrote a book, thought another way about something. Has working on this book done that for you? I, I think so, yeah, certainly. Um, I think it's, like I said before, it, um, one of the things I wanted to write about was faith um, mm -hmm. and religion. And I think that um, it's allowed me to sort of explore lots of those kind of remnants of, of feelings that I had about going to church and being part of the uh, faith and what have you. So I think that's right. been an interesting an interesting thing. I'm not sure I've come to any conclusions about that, but I think it's just been interesting to, to explore that and go back to it and think about uh, what it was like to be part of a, a church family and, uh, you know, the, those kind of feelings that, that go with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think one of the most interesting things that, that I've noticed or one of the interesting things that I've begun to explore a lot more is a relationship between myself and, and, and landscape. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the part of uh, England that I live in, um, I'm sort of surrounded really by moorland and, and the, the, the sea isn't very far away. Right. You know, I can get in the car and drive 20 minutes and I'm being in the middle of nowhere and not see anyone for, for, for hours. So mm. um, I think it, it's not religious, it's maybe not even spiritual, but there, there is some kind of connection that I feel I have with, with the natural world. And I, I'm not entirely sure what that is. And I think certainly the next book that I'm writing is, is going to sort of explore that a little bit more, really, I think. So that's, that's really, really fascinating, is trying to, uh, I suppose, kind of quantify that otherness that the landscape embodies, really. Right. Okay, I got that. Okay, I got that. Okay, so actually you mentioned another book. Uh, actually, that kind of leads into my next question. So I was going to ask if you have another book in store or exploring other things in the future. Um, what, what book uh, is... Yes. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Sorry. Yeah, so, sorry. Uh, well, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask: Are there other, any anything else that you may want to explore as an author, uh, sometime, sometime in the future? Yeah, I mean the the, um, the the novel I'm just in the throes of finishing at the moment uh, is based. Um, well, it's set uh, on the moorland uh, near, not far from where I live, and um, it's again, it's about this relationship I think between people and, and landscape and how one informs the other. Right. Um, it's also about the ways in which landscape produces folklore and myth, mm -hmm. and how these things are sort of um, taken on by communities that live in those quite right. isolated places. Um, so that's certainly certainly something which is um, which is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. um, I would quite like to. To write some non-fiction at some point as well, actually about about that, just taking that idea a little bit further, particularly the idea of um, how uh, landscape and solitude go hand in hand, and how the, the kind of relationship between those two things. So I think that's that's a project that I'd quite like to uh, to do in the future. Um, so yeah, I mean, the the idea that I had before I started writing novels was, was that I wanted to try and write the first few novels and set them in uh, rural Lancashire, which is in, in the northwest of England, mm -hmm. which is where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, so I think once I've done that, maybe I'll, I'll move on to different different ideas after that. But I'm kind of caught up in that whole sort of landscape um, relationship at the moment. So it's just, there's, there's a really rich scene to explore. So I think I'll be kind of uh, interested in that for some time to come. Cool, cool, great, great, fantastic. And uh, hey, looking forward to your to your future works. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Andrew, in the last few minutes of, of, of this of this interview, are there any last like last words of wisdom you'd like to share to inspire our listeners? Anything at all? <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, lots of people have kind of asked me, um, you know, how do you go about writing a novel, and you know, where do you start? Um, and I think I'm not. I never feel like I'm very good at giving <laughs> very good advice to be honest okay. about writing. I just kind of say, well, you know, you sort of sit down and write it and, and it'll happen eventually, which is not uh, particularly uh, helpful. But I, I think that the, the, the most important thing really is just having perseverance and just, just having the, the, the will to, to, to do it. Mm. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess, you know, all writers write because they love it. And that, that's got to be the bottom line. Right. You know, if, if you, yeah, all writers are going to write anyway, regardless of whether they get published. Um, right. But I just think if you know if you want to if you want to be successful and you want to have something published, you just got to keep going with it. Just keep persevering with it, you know. And um, it took me a long time to get to get a novel published, probably trying for maybe ten or fifteen years. Mm. Um, but if you really want it, then it's worth sticking it out because someone at some point will recognise that you're going to recognise your talent, and will recognise that you're writing, and you'll recognise that you have something to say. Um, 
and I think just just trusting in in, the, in your own voice as well. And I think that's something that I've begun to sort of get better at doing. Really, is just trusting that what you put down on the page is 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 kind of truthful and to you. Mm. Okay, cool, interesting, interesting words right there. Cool. So, in closing, the book is The Loney. The author is our guest, Andrew Michael Hurley, and you can check out the book on Amazon. So, Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being an author story. I must say it was a very interesting session for me, and I hope it was the same thing for our listeners as well. Thank you very much. Thanks for asking me. Cool. And if you'd like to follow our author interviews on YouTube, just click on the subscribe button. And if you'd like, you can buy the book right now by going to the Amazon link in the video description below. So that's all, folks. So long for now, everyone. But I'll be back on Author Story with another inspiring author.